Welcome to Faith Encouraged. I'm Father Barnabas Powell, and the Orthodox Christian faith is meant to make you by grace what Christ is by nature. Being Orthodox on purpose takes focus and attentiveness, and we pray these homilies will help you do just that. Here's today's homily. And even yesterday, as we were laying to rest, our precious friend Afton Romanzik uh, here at the, um, uh, at, the, uh, at the church. And this first time I would ever done a bright week funeral, which is very different than the, other, uh, than the other funeral that we would normally do outside of bright week. Bright week um, is, changes everything because the resurrection of Jesus Christ changes everything. The resurrection of Jesus Christ changes everything everything folks if it doesn't change everything then i confess to you some you've got to check and see if there's a little thomas in you because it's interesting to me that in our lesson today from the gospel when jesus first appears to his disciples he appears in a locked room and so his resurrected body is certainly of a different nature than our physical body because every time i've tried to go into a locked room without having the key I've been prevented. You should have seen me one day trying to crawl in my back window at my house, having locked myself out. It's not a pretty sight. It's, uh, this body wasn't made to shimmy into a, a small window. It just wasn't. It wasn't made for that. So Jesus appears among them and he says, what is it today? The first thing he says, shalom, peace be with you. The common greeting now, folks, not only among Christians, but Jews and Muslims. Salam Aleikum. Aleikum Salam. So that's the common greeting. Peace be with you. And they're so excited to see Jesus Christ. And what does Jesus do? He shows them His hands and His side. The very thing Thomas wanted to see to believe that it was really Him. But Thomas missed church that Sunday. Don't tell anybody else that weren't here. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. It'll make them feel bad. We don't want them to do that. Thomas missed church that Sunday, and because of his absence, he missed the very thing that he said he needed to believe that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. And of course, Jesus says some amazing things at this first appearance with His disciples. He says again to them, peace be with you. And then He says, as the Father has sent me, so now I send you. I commission you. By the, word, the, very, by, by the way, the very word apostle means the one who is sent. That's what the word apostle means in Greek. It means the one who is sent. And Jesus says, I send you just like my Father sent me. I send you out to spread the word, to share the good news that mortality has been defeated, that you no longer have to live in fear, that you no longer have to live in the terror of, oh my goodness, I only have a few short years on this planet. I better grab for all the gusto I can. You don't have to live in the frenzied moment of hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, because life is dwindling, time is running short, the clock is ticking, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. I no longer have to live in the slavery of that hellacious, horrible ideology. Mortality has been defeated. I was talking to the folks yesterday uh, at the funeral. And um, I was telling them that the resurrection of Jesus Christ changes everything. There is no way for human society to go back to a time before the coming of Jesus Christ. As much as the uh, the secularists or the atheists or anybody else might want to try to de-Christianize this planet, sorry. Even now, the world is being re-enchanted with the message of the mysteries of the unseen. Now, because of our de-Christianized society, the enchantment is going to take some really, really weird turns. I'm not saying it was UFOs, but it was UFOs. Little green men 
and all kinds of amazing things. Um, I, I, I caught my uh, daughters watching this, um, uh, this show about haunted houses. These are real people, and they're sitting around this table doing a Ouija board, praying in Jesus' name. Jesus, we just ask you to protect us as we uh, enter into this spiritual thing that we're about to do. And I'm going, cut that foolishness off. And so the reenchantment of society, because folks, we can't go back to a time before the coming of Jesus. The planet's changed. The universe has changed. Christ is risen from the dead. Nothing's the same anymore. And you can't pretend it didn't happen. If you live as if the resurrection didn't happen and you prove that, brothers and sisters, by your priorities and your choices, what you prioritize in your life reveals what you truly believe. Period. Full stop. End of discussion. What you prioritize in your life reveals your true faith. If Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, as C.S. Lewis said, if Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, nothing else matters. If Jesus Christ hasn't risen from the, bed, from the dead, nothing else matters. The resurrection of Jesus Christ changes everything. And it certainly changed these men when Jesus spoke to them. In fact, he even said, I'm going to send you out and I want you to spread this message all over the world. I was only in one place when I was here preaching the kingdom of God. Now I'm going to multiply myself and my believers throughout history, throughout time. And they're going to march through time declaring Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death. And the whole world will never be the same again. Human history cannot go back to B.C. Can't. It's not possible. Much to the chagrin of those who would really like to pretend Jesus never existed. The only thing that's going to happen is they're going to re-enchant the society in really weird, strange ways. Kind of like they're going to re-enchant the society and believe in magic that I was born in the wrong body. I was, I'm, I'm, I'm going to by myself create my own truth. What is your truth? Live out your truth. The re-enchantment of society without the resurrection of Jesus is going to be strange, folks. It already is. And you're going to have to prepare your children to live in an enchanted world that has been warped by the misuse and the forgetfulness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the reason why Jesus goes on to tell His disciples this morning, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, I want to run one quick rabbit trail here. I mean, it's just us this morning, so we can do this, right? Is that okay? You've got to understand always, when you see the word sin in the New Testament, it is from the Greek word amartia. Amartia literally means to miss the mark. It does not mean to break a rule. That is not sin in the Orthodox Church. The breaking of the rules is not sin. It's not sin. If you think breaking the rules is sin, you have a wrong vision of what, of what sin is. Sin is much worse than that. Sin is much worse than breaking the rules. Breaking the rules is only the symptom of sin. Because sin means to miss the mark. Amartia. To miss the mark. I want you to think of it as an archery term, okay? The archer pulls back his, his uh, bow. He fires the arrow. And the arrow is going towards the bullseye. And it misses the bullseye by this much or by this much. Doesn't matter how much it misses. It misses. In the orthodox understanding of, the, of what the human problem is, it isn't that we tend to break rules. It's that we have, been, we have lost the ability to hit the bullseye. And so what does Jesus do? Jesus comes among us, lives in the flesh that we have, and hits the bullseye every time He tries. And then He says, tell you what, I'll make you a deal. I'll trade my score for yours. Deal? <laughs> Sign me up. That's a good deal. 
And He gives us His righteousness. And that merciful generosity is meant to stir something up in your heart that says that I am no longer going to live as if Jesus doesn't matter. I'm no longer going to live as if the resurrection of Jesus Christ hasn't given me everything I need to hit the bullseye every time I fire my arrow. And when I do miss the arrow, God has given me the grace to say if you confess your sins, He is faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. This is the life after the resurrection of Jesus that God offers each of us. And so He tells His disciples, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. If you come to confession, those of you who have come to confession, you know I say those very words. And then I add, therefore I declare to you, my brothers, whatever you've told me today, whether, in, whether, or whether you've told me whatever you've, whatever you've committed in word or deed or ignorance, God forgives you and, and loosens you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's the gift of life after the resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus changes everything. And in our world today, that is certainly going through a re-enchantment, we need the anchoring wisdom of orthodoxy to keep us from falling into the delusion of the evil one and, de and developing and embracing parasitic, cancerous ideologies that are only meant to destroy us and not to let us live in the resurrection life of Christ. I confess to you, brothers and sisters, I'm an old man. but So because of that, I'm pretty much immune to all of the stuff that's happening in society. It's already passing me by. Nobody's, nobody's marketing their stuff to me anymore. I'm not, uh, I'm not, the, I'm not the, the demographic that most... Unless it's for um, uh, depends and... Uh, and uh, and funeral plots. That's about it. That's, that's how they market to me. That's it. But brothers and sisters, we are left the awesome challenge to prepare our children and our grandchildren to live in a world that has been re-enchanted without the memory of the resurrection. That is gripped by the foolishness of a parasitic, cancerous ideology that has become so childishly narcissistic that they're enslaved to their own darkness. We have to give our children the ability to live in this world. And the only way to do that is to pass on them this resurrection, Jesus Christ, life, faith, that is preserved for us in the tradition of our precious Orthodox Church. Um, we had several folks who were not Orthodox at, um, at the funeral yesterday. And I had a chance to spend some time with them after the funeral. They, they were all friends of mine, actually. Afton went to a cigar shop near here, and a bunch of folks from there uh, were, were, uh, for, they were at the funeral, about 15, about 15 of them. And they had never been to an Orthodox service in their entire life. And you should have heard them peppering me with questions. And then one guy said, you know, Father, when I was growing up, Man, I was sitting in church in my, in, in, in my, I won't say what church he went to, but he was, I was sitting in my church and I was wondering, as a kid, I was wondering, when is this going to get over with? When is this going to get over with? This is boring. I hate this. This is horrible. And he said, I'm in that service, that, uh, that, that funeral service that you're in, and it was, you know, it was an hour and it didn't even feel like 10 minutes. And I looked at him, I said, son, that's because you're in a timeless space here. You're in a timeless space here. This is where eternity reigns. So of course time acts a little differently here. And I said, do you know why the church has developed itself to be like that? Because you need to know how to live in a timeless place. You're going to live forever. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. You are going to live forever. It's going to happen. Done deal. Now the question is, are you going to know how to enjoy it? Our job as adults is to pass on the faith to our children so that they can stand in this dark time and know how to enjoy eternity. And may God deal with us so ever, ever so harshly if we fail in this holy task. Show up, folks. That's half the battle. Don't miss when it's time to see Jesus. 
And you won't be like Thomas saying, I won't believe unless I see. This morning, on this Thomas Sunday, please know, he's not, he's not doubting Thomas in orthodoxy. You know what he's called? Thomas the Believer. Be like Thomas. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. I pray this was a blessing to you. If it is a blessing to you, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share these videos. It really does help us a great deal. Speaking of helping us, if you'd like to support this media outreach, go to our Patreon site at Faith Encouraged on Patreon.com. You can also visit us at our website at faithencouraged.org and write me at frbarnabas at faithencouraged.org. I look forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless you.